Brian Wells, your host and art director here at Fineworks. I have with me James. James, can you help me with your last name? Sure. Brian, my last name is Theopistos. It's a, it's a little bit difficult to pronounce, so I don't blame you for asking me. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, James is founder and in charge of product development as well as color management. Today we're going to be talking about why prints may be too dark. Why is this the most common problem people seem to face? Uh, well, it, it's really interesting that you ask that because uh, you would think with the type of printing we do where we're printing a, people's artwork and their photography uh, and utilizing wide format printers and we're making very big prints that the most common issue that, that people might have when they're ordering their prints from us is that maybe their image files are not big enough. Actually, that's... While that does happen on occasion, the, the problem that we see more often than that is that people are submitting to us image files that are darker than they realize. Unfortunately, the majority of monitors, unless they've been calibrated with a calibration device, are going to be too bright in general. Uh, James, just the other day we had the following email from Sharon in Snowmass, Colorado. Uh, her, her comment in question is, I have used a number of color labs and noticed that frequently my prints come out darker than I, than I would like. But when I print them at home, they usually come out looking quite good. Mm -hmm. Why is that and is there anything I can do to ensure the prints I order from you guys look like what I print at home? A lot of the, uh, your Epson, your Canon printers, your HP, the, the high quality inkjet printers uh, that you can buy off the shelf, have automatic color corrective features built in. And this feature, what it does is it corrects people's images, it, it brings them so that they're not too dark or it, it makes other adjustments that you otherwise might not be aware of. And so when you get your print, you're actually getting a, a color corrected print even on your inkjet printer at home. Mm -hmm. Now this feature in many cases is automatically turned on and it depends on the printer where it's located but it's usually found in your printer drivers. Okay. How, how about the uh, paper? Does this affect this as well? It sure does. You know if you're buying a, a nice glossy you know bright white paper stock at you know the office supply store down the street um, you know it, it's, you're gonna get some nice good you know crisp sharp prints. Um, but when you start to delve into alternative media, which I like to call like our, our, our fine art papers, which have a very absorbent matte surface, mm. or you're utilizing canvas, which is uh, highly textured, uh, how those images, you know, if you, if you were to take that same image and print it on a different media, it's not going to necessarily come out exactly the same because that image file has not been optimized to be printed on that particular surface. Uh, can you show us some ways to check beforehand if an image may be too dark? Yeah, absolutely. What I have here, and we're going to take a look at this exercise on Photoshop, a way that you can correct your image. You can check beforehand to see if perhaps your image is darker than you anticipated. Here we have the image that I want to use as an example. The same technique that I'm going to show you here is also available to you in Photoshop Elements. It's a simulated painting, which means it's a, a digital artwork. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's digital artwork or um, if it's a photograph of a, an original painting that you want to use to have reproduced into Jaclay prints. Or it could also be just a, a regular photograph that you want to have printed up on canvas or one of our fine art papers. The same principles apply. In this case, what I'm concerned with is whether or not the white areas in the image are truly white. I suspect, or in this particular image, I do want some of the parts of the image to not necessarily be pure white, like around his hat, um, the shadows of his shirt. Obviously, I want those to be kind of leaning toward the grayish spectrum or the grayish, grayish tone. Um, but areas around like, let's say in these margins where I want the appearance of like the paint is kind of just blending into the paper uh, or the 
highlights along the top of his shirt, when that is printed, I want that to be all white. And with the type of printing we do, all white is basically an absence of color. So because our printers don't print white, they simply do not place any ink in those particular areas of the image. And that's how you get white. So what I want to do now is I want to find out whether or not the areas, such as here in the top, is absolutely white or if maybe this image might be too dark. Now I know because I'm, I'm using a calibrated monitor and I can tell that it's not. But if the viewer, if they're seeing this and the, they think this area in the upper right hand corner is all white, then that's a good indication that their monitor may be just a little bit too bright because it's cr making that slightly off white area appear pure white. So how, do, how can we tell? But what I want to do is I want to get a little sampling of some of those pixels in there. And I want to come over here and I want to use this tool called Color, this Color tab, which can be accessed under Window and, and just check the uh, uh, check Color. Okay. And when I select that, I want all these dials to move, be moving all the way to the right and give me 255 all the way down because 255 is the value um, in for red, green, and blue in the digital world for white. Now if these values okay, are, are a little bit to the left, like uh, then th that means we have more of a gray. And anytime you have all the values to the left, you have black. So what I'm going to do is come over here and I'm going to select my eyedropper tool. And with this eyedropper tool, I'm going to come over here into this, this uh, upper right hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and just click some of the pixels. Now notice how over here the values changed because that's the color that I'm selecting. I'm just going to kind of click around in there and it kind of hovers around the 200 range. Now if I were to double click on this set foreground color or even down here, I can see how close that is, have a visual of how close that is to the white. And it's not, it's, it's quite a ways away from the white. So that, to me, tells me that this image is too dark because my whites are going to print gray. So how do we fix that? Well, my favorite method is the Levels tool. The Levels tool can be found under Image, Adjustment, and Levels. So there's really two methods that you can utilize. The first method, which is to me is the easiest and I feel like I get the most control, is to just use these markers here and drag them to the position that you, that you want. So let's take a look at that. Now notice uh, again that our, our white point is over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that to there. Then I'm going to take a sampling. Notice how those numbers are now a little higher than they were. Let me move them back. All right. See, this is how it was, 196 range, kind of a, around 200, kind of upper 190s, 200. But when I move this over here, those numbers on the right go up higher. I want to move it a little bit more because I want this to be all white. I'm not quite there yet. And there you go. Now I'm getting all white. Now if the image appears a little too contrasty for you, you can always adjust what's called your midtones. Kind of move them over to the left 
that'll kind of balance that out. You may have to adjust it on the right just a tad if you move your mid-tones, but not too much. Okay. Now our blacks are fine. However, if this had been, this image had been overexposed or too bright, you basically do everything in the opposite direction. Okay. And then I would click OK and save it. But before we do that, let me show you the other method you can utilize. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel and I'm going to reopen it again. Image, Adjustment, Levels. In this case, we're going to use these eyedropper tools over here to select different areas in the image which are going to automatically correct these markers down here. First, I'm going to select the white point, which I know is up in here. And I'm just kind of click around until I get maybe the one of the higher numbers. Yeah, I guess that's about as good as we can get. Oh, there we go. 200. Okay. And then I'm going to select a black point. Now in this image, the only there's not a whole lot of black. Um, maybe underneath this wheel here, I think actually this one might be better. And see how the number went to five up in here. Uh, I want it to be all zeros. I don't know if we can get it. I'm sure we can. Just finding the, the black pixel might be about as close as we can get and that's fine okay I'm not overly concerned with the image uh, it printing too too lightly I'm more concerned with it printing too dark so that will correct that and now I want to select my midtones now this gets a little tricky because it's going to really shift your colors for instance if I select this red Look what happens. If I select the blue, it goes red. So I usually, you know, I, unless I know that there's something that is actually supposed to be gray, I usually leave the mid-tone selector alone. But I do know that around his shirt, there was some, supposed to be some gray. Yeah, kind of in that area. Okay, and you can kind of see how it's changed. Now, if those tones shift too much for you, you may just want to ignore this tool altogether. Okay, so let's try it again. Image Adjustment Levels. I'm going to select a white point. Yeah. And then I'm going to select a black point. Where was that? Right around there. And that gave me pretty good results and again I can if, if it's too contrasty I'm gonna go back up to here I can kind of adjust the contrast a little bit and there you go now there is an auto feature so let's take a look at the auto feature again image adjustment levels now if I click on auto it may or may not do a decent job. I'm not a big fan of any image editing software's auto feature, as they call it, um, because you, you really lose a lot of control, okay? After I click that auto, I still wanna make some changes because if I select this white, it's still not all white. So again, I'm gonna go back to what works best for me and I, and to me, that's going to give me the, the results that I want because when I come, come up here, oh, let me move it a little bit more. When I click on here, I'm gonna get that pure white so that this is the whiteness of the paper. Now I'm ready to save it and print it. Okay, all right. Um, I want to thank James for his insights. Um, if you have any questions about what we discussed, Email us at customercare at finalworks.com or visit us online at finalworks.com. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it.